Hi everyone, Happy New Year's! My name is Tom, I'm one of the developers of Cyber Launch Tycoon, and currently I'm working on a new project called New Brooklyn Bridge Tycoon. This project is about the bridge being transferred into a park. The players can buy food booths, attract customers, take care of resources, and compete with each other to monopolize the bridge. This week was a bit slower than the previous ones. First of all, because it was New Year's, I didn't get much done on, th on those two days. Second, I don't have off of work anymore, so I only get to work on the game during the evenings. On Sunday, I did some minor changes, I fixed the bug, and I added a placeholder for the shop drop-down order creation, so the window defaults to the placeholder instead of one of the shops in the list. Then Monday, I didn't do anything, I was just relaxing. On Tuesday, I fixed a few more bugs, I fixed the UI of the order creation, one that the ingredients didn't show properly, the other one I had an issues with the layout drawings. It's still not fixed fully, but it's much better than before. So let's say um, I have this UI open, right? And we have this shop. So when I click on the shop, it takes me to this menu. But let's say I have the UI and I have this shop, right? If I click on the UI with the shop being behind it, it still opens that menu, which is very annoying. It's very annoying. And I finally fixed the issue with opening the shop or factory menus, even though there is a UI over them. Then I changed the UI a bit. I added the options to edit and delete a distribution order. I added a button to the UI to send out the orders manually. And I quickly updated the visuals of the factories. Still need a lot of more work, <laughs> but this much better than just a square. On Wednesday, I fixed a bug relating to the distribution center UI, not being properly synchronized in multiplayer. And also on Wednesday, I went to the indoors wind tunnel. That was hard and a lot of fun. Then on Thursday, I started working on the ingredient distribution scheduler. The way I implemented it is using the tick system that I have. So the tick system triggers every 0.2 seconds. It invokes an event, and everything that is subscribed to that event is getting triggered. I'm using this system instead of the update method, because certain things I don't have to run every frame, it's okay if they're a bit delayed. One example is the pedestrian are subscribed to it, because, because there is no reason for the pedestrian to check every frame if they arrive to their destination. Five times a second is enough to check that. And the same for the distribution system. I don't mind if it's delayed by 0.2 seconds. It doesn't have to be precise science for the distribution. So that's fine. And it saves the resources. So the way it works, every tick the distribution scheduler checks what time of the cycle it is, checks when it was scheduled, and checks whether it was already distributed. If not, it calls on the player send out orders, which in turn creates a distribution order network message and sends that to the server, and the server takes care of implementing that order. The player can now schedule their distribution. They can set it to be automatic every certain hour of, of a cycle, or if they choose, they can send them manually. On Friday, I continued working on the scheduler UI. So instead of using a slider, now I added a clock where the player can move around the clock arm and choose what time of the cycle they want to schedule their order. Currently, the clock is a 24-hour clock, but eventually I'm gonna add a 12-hour clock and an option in the settings to change between a 12 and a 24 time format. So to implement this, I was having some trouble because I wanted to let the player the option to schedule it on a round hour, not like 17.15. And for the UI, I needed to stick the clock arm exactly on the point. I'm using this to figure out the angle, figure out the nearest hour, set the rotation, and then set the mechanical clock. Right now, the mechanical clock is just a text, but in the future, I want to make it in a style of like a steampunk and make it flip in a really nice animation. Something cute and small. I was having a lot of trouble transferring the time from the analog clock to an actual time in the game that I want it to be. I tried coming up with a mathematic formula for it, but that didn't work. So I ended up creating a huge dictionary with all the possible angles of the clock arm and its corresponding time. So yeah, this was the quick update for this week. If you want to get more frequent updates, you can follow me on Twitter. And for live dev, you can watch me streaming on Twitch. Thank you for watching, Happy New Year's again, and I will see you next time.